by our government. You know, let's, you know, be cautious and be physical distancing. Although I don't really understand why, you know, Andy Burke said you can't go in your car to, to a church to your service church. with your window wow. up. But this is the one thing I want to talk about, though. The one thing I want to talk about is that, you know, we're doing all of this to flatten the curve. Okay, so we hear this. We hear this a lot. We hear flatten the curve, flatten the curve. But what does it mean to flatten the curve? I feel like the news talks about it so much. We hear social distancing so much. We are flattening the curve so much. In fact, Governor Bill Lee talked about how we're going to have to implement social distancing long term until there's a vaccine. Okay, let's just break that down because that is the most asinine comment that someone can yeah. give us about um, where we're going to end up within our community. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about flattening the curve. And then we're going to talk about Governor Bill Lee's uh, comment about how we're not going to open up until there's uh, a vaccine. So first of all, flattening the curve means this. It does not mean that less people will get the virus. P the same number of people are going to get the virus. You're going to get the virus. Everyone else is going to get the virus. The whole point is to not overrun our hospital system. So if we're not overrunning our hospital system, that's how we can save lives, right? So that our hospital system can deal with what's going on. Do you think there's more ways to flatten the curve? It means how do we stop more people from needing to go to the hospital? Yes, we know at least now studies have shown that the coronavirus, what is it? It's high blood pressure. Yeah, right. the comorbidities, The comorbidities, right? high blood pressure. And how many of you guys say, oh, I'm fine. I'm only oh, taking a high blood pill. pressure medication. Yeah. We got blood sugar imbalances, Metabolic heart disease, issues, yeah. 800,000 cases of a, a heart issue every year, 600,000 deaths a year of heart attack. So if you want to know the best way that you and your family can be well enough to help flatten the curve, get yourself stinking well. Yeah. That's what you have to understand. Flattening the curve means stay out of the hospital. Now, guys, this is the Wellness Radio. We have to go on a break. I want to let you guys know we do have a, a clinic in Hamilton Place where we see we are structural corrective chiropractors there. We're helping people regain their health, get out of pain, headaches, lose weight, come off medication safely and naturally. Um, and then we do virtual health coaching. We do one-on-one -on -one consults. We do group coaching. And so the whole month of April, we're doing those appointments just for 45 instead of those appointments can go up to 150. So if you guys would like to make an appointment with myself or Dr. Nathan in our office, make sure to give us a call at 423-362-5360. Again, that's 423-362-5360. We'll see you right after the break. All right, oh, guys. Boy. So you know we're we're broadcasting from our home you know because obviously the um uh again the the uh covid-19 apocalypse that's going on right now being you know, home you know home arrest and everything across the entire world so we're broadcasting from home right now you know and and again we we kind of go back and forth here so if there's a little bit of a delay that's why so just bear with us here so you know i i really today you know i i titled the show um, you know, what is really behind COVID-19 deaths and what is really behind, uh, you know, the people that are having the most serious complications. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, you know, I, I, I wanted to kind of blow this up a little bit. You know, I, I'm getting to a point now where I'm so sick of all the misinformation out there that it just drives me nuts. So we're going to talk about real issues, right? We're going to, we're going to actually talk about, uh, again, what's the, the primary drivers behind these, uh, these issues, you know? And so, Dr. Rebecca already mentioned, you know, the, the main two that we're really going to talk about today. And number one is dealing with high blood pressure, right? A stress response. We know, and when you look at the actual stats, right? Not, not, not the, the Bill Gates contagion model, not the, uh, you know, not all these, you know, Dr. Fauci's mess that he's trying to get everybody else in. When we look at the real actual data, what we're seeing is that, you know, anywhere from 70 uh, to 75% of the people that are having serious complications with uh, this with COVID-19 end up having something like high blood pressure, right? So they're having something like hypertension. This is a big deal because in our country, you can actually technically, by definition of your doctor, your physician, you can actually be labeled as healthy and still be taking a blood pressure medication. I've even had patients that come in to see us that have been put on a blood pressure medication as 
preventative measures, which is absolute insanity. But this is just the reality of it. So we have patients that come in to see us all the time. They say, no, you know, I'm a pretty healthy guy. Uh, you know, overall, you know, I, I take care of myself pretty well. I go to the gym every now and then. I eat pretty well. You know, I, I don't really get sick a whole lot. And then we look at their list of medications and they're on a high blood pressure medication. They're on a statin medication. And so my next question is always, okay, so if you are healthy, why are you on these drugs? Well, you know, I it, it, I got a little bit of high blood pressure. It runs in my family. It's not a big deal. They only have me on a little bit. I'm like, so you're telling me a little bit of dysfunction is okay, <laughs> right? So just a little bit. So if we take that, you know, that rule, we might as well just say, you know what? A little bit of crystal meth is not a big deal, <laughs> right? A little bit of mercury every now and then, a little bit of aluminum, not a big deal. It's okay. But bottom line is if you're having to take a medication, that means you are covering up an underlying fire in the body. You have a symptom that is trying to tell your body something and it's creating issues and it will continue to create worse problems in the body if not taken care of, all right? And so that's what we're gonna be going over today. So make sure you share this information. Uh, you know, again, get it out here. It's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, guys, welcome to Wellness Radio. I am your health expert, Dr. Nathan Warren. I'm here with my beautiful wife. All right, guys, welcome back to Wellness Radio. <laughs> I told you there's a delay here, so it's, it's kind of hard to do. Hey, guys, welcome back to the Wellness Radio. We thought we were on before, but now we're actually on. If this is your first time tuning in, we are here every Saturday morning from 10 to 11 a.m., we have a health center located in Chattanooga, right there next to the YMCA and next to the Home Depot. Um, and we do virtual health coaching and consults all over the US. And so we are so excited to be here. Like y'all, we love you guys because you would not believe the work it takes to go live from our house. And we are not technologically slabby people, but we do this That's because- That's an understatement. Yeah, I'm no <laughs> like, like if you're technologically savvy and like we're all the way past that, like yeah. we're just like, like we're like as rock bottom as you can go, yeah. but we're doing it because we know that in a time where there's so much information going around, there's a lot of fear and a lot of misinformation and miseducation. It's so important to share the correct information about what it looks like to be well during this time. And so, you know, before the break, we talked about how flattening the curve, it means to lessen the burden on our local hospitals, wherever you're at. What does it not mean? It does not mean that you're not going to get the virus. It means you probably are going to get the virus if you have not gotten it already. The same amount of people are going to get the virus regardless of whether the curve is flat or not. So I want you guys to understand that because for some people out there, you guys think that this is going to protect you. You think your cloth masks are gonna protect you, although studies have shown over and over again that it's not gonna be the best protection. So what do you do? You take care of the internal environment yes. so that your body responds the right way to the virus so that you don't end up in the hospital. And so that the people that really need it, yes. people that have real complications, people that are older have the support that they need. You don't need to be clogging up the hospital because you have high blood pressure and you thought that blood pressure medication was just going to take care of it. The problem is still there. And this matters. This is a really big deal because if you're not taking care of yourself, if you're not in control, if you're not responsible, if you do not take the power back for you and your family, then you give that power over to someone else. Yep. And so what's really crazy is on Monday, Governor Bill Lee here in Tennessee announced that we will be having extended social distancing in our state, in the state of Tennessee, until there's a vaccine. And that is, like I said, the most asinine comment, the most foolish comment to say, and I, you know, I wish he was listening to this right now. It's a because, comment, not a scientific comment. Yeah, no, it's mm -hmm. dogmatic. It's trying to give you guys some false sense of security and hope. Because I can go ahead and tell you this, what we do know about the coronavirus from what scientists have been saying is that it mutates. It's a <laughs> mutated strand of virus, which means that it's more like the flu than it is like something like, you know, else, like the measles or something. So what that means is that by saying that we have to stay locked into our homes and in this abnormal way of living until we get a vaccine, 
that's not going to happen because this is a mute. How well is the flu vaccine working for us here in the States? It's not. It's a mutating. Oh and they've created a SARS vaccine in the past that has failed as well. So I don't know what the heck is going on in the news and in our world where so many people believe that we're going to be safe when they come up with this vaccine. Let me go ahead and tell you guys this. We're all about education, okay? And we'll see if I can say all of this here. We're on Facebook Live. We're all about education. But when you have some of the leading uh, experts, like leading people that are for vaccination saying this is very dangerous. Like yeah. that's the thing. People that are like on the front field of, you know, of studying viruses and studying vaccinations, they're saying this is a really scary thing to try to put onto people. Yeah. I mean, people that I really, really dislike, <laughs> really scientists I really dislike. There's some doctors I really dislike. We're all agreeing on this. Yeah, which this is, is wild, insane. right? It's, it's wild. Scary. This is it's the time crazy. that we live in. Yeah. But what that means is that if you are okay with sitting back and saying like, hey, you know, I have to, you know, I'm giving up this kind of uh, my responsibility for my health to someone else, then someone else is going to dictate that for you. But if you educate yourself and empower yourself and have that knowledge, knowledge and knowing that, number one, I'm responsible for being well. And number two, I'm responsible for holding my elected officials accountable, communicating, um, you know, interacting with your elected officials, talking with them about what it looks like to return to quote unquote normal. That's going to be really, really important. But I say all that because I don't want you guys to have false security. That's what we're being fed right now. We're given false security, false security in a vaccine that we know the leading experts right now are saying is not going to be the answer. False security and just cloth masks. Guys, you know we love you, yeah. but if you're wearing a cloth mask and you're going out and getting McDonald's, you and I got to talk. Or putting okay? down your cloth mask to smoke a cigarette. Yeah. Are you freaking getting me right We got to talk about that because oh, there smart. are people that are very real high risk, you know, like yeah. our older nursing homes that we have to help take care of. And the way you do that is by flattening the curve. And the mm. way you do that is by taking care of yourself. But I was, you have to take care of yourself. But we got to we gotta address this as well because, you know, I, I know like Dr. Oz came out and he actually <laughs> made a statement that I thought was actually fantastic. You know, Dr. Oz was talking about how, you know, he was talking about schools and how we need to get kids back in schools. And actually, you know, basically the loss of life rate is going to be, uh, you know, so much more the, the longer we keep our kids out of school over time, which I completely agree with. With. And that's why, you know, when we talk about something like herd immunity, I, you know, you hear people make the statement that, oh, we're talking about lives versus money. You, you know, getting the economy back up, you're putting money before lives. That is a load of crap. That is the biggest lie that's out there right now. And I'll tell you why that's a lie. It's because when you look at things like Bloomberg Research, for example, we know for every 1% that unemployment goes up, we know that this is a drastic increase in loss of life over the next three to five years. And we're talking about double and triple the amount of lives lost from COVID-19. And so it's not lives versus money. That is, I'm so sick of hearing that. It is lives versus lives. And so when we're really looking at the data, we have to recognize that again, at some point, we can't just sit back in our home and say, hey, we're just gonna isolate ourselves from all of nature. Because I'll tell you right now, nature always wins. It will continue to win. What we've done is we've waged war on microorganisms really from the very beginning, from the way that we've treated our soil to the way that we've raised our food to the way that we've isolated cities into relying on, you know, again, outside places to bring them in. Like New York City's an island. You know, it's literally at a point now they couldn't sustain themselves even if they wanted to. And so we've outsourced everything to try to gain a buck here and there. And we've literally put ourselves in this situation. So what's the solution? That's why I love, I actually love what Sweden is doing. You know, that Sweden is, they, you, I still hear this false information out there. Well, but Sweden has all these loss of lives. Guys, they're actually doing fantastic. And when you look at the data and you look at the peaks in all of these different countries, Germany, Sweden, things like, you know, uh, again, other places in the UK, when you look at here, China, and you look at all of the information together, here's what you find out. That the average 
peak time is 32 days. That's the average. And that even though all of these countries took a different route, you know what ends up happening? It's almost the exact same. Sweden hits their peak before we do, right? Why? Because they took the herd immunity route and they said, you know what? We're going to get more, the majority of our, our stronger, younger people out there exposed to this so that again, we can continue to take care of our, uh, you know, continue to take care of our economy. We don't shut everything down. But again, they still have a peak, just like we have a peak, just like China had a peak, Everyone just like every it. single country. And so when you look at the data and you put it together, they all show just about the same, which means what? We just literally spent a month and a half in freaking house arrest in the United States for what? And I can't wait to hear people say, good work, everybody. We literally <laughs> well, did no it with social distancing. There's no, I mean, oh, in the end, man. if... So this is, I read something that was like, you know, we're, we're depending on people that didn't get it right the first time to tell us what it's going to look like six months from now. So for the past couple months, people were telling us that it was going to look like this, it was going to look like this. You know, first I remember I read an article where it was like, you know, X amount of people were going to die. And I was like, whoa, how, oh my gosh, that's a really high number. And now sort it's like, like 2.2 million yeah, or something. Yeah. And now it's like, oh no, we're redoing the model and it's going to be like this. Oh no, it's like this. And so, you know, really in the end, what we want every single person to understand is that we don't want you to go out there and do something crazy. We want you to follow, listen, our office, cool, we are following those CDC recommendations <laughs> to a T. I mean, my, my hands are His like hands are dry. Yeah. Like we are following those recommendations because that's what we have to do right now because that's what's asked of us. But this is the thing, you know, uh, you have to understand that you can't, number one, live in fear. Number two, you have to ask critical questions. Yes. The truth is- it's good. Critical thing. Well, there's a majority of us that are gonna get the virus if we have not had it already. And so we don't have to live in fear of that. We have to understand what what do we do to prepare ourselves? What do we do to take care of ourselves so that, guess what? So that you do not overwhelm the hospital system. By taking care of yourself, you stay out of the hospital and you're helping, you're helping to flatten the curve. And so what we want to do, you know, with, with the Wellness Radio, this is all about hope and helping you guys be well-equipped and not living in fear in the news and social media because someone always knows someone someone that was healthy, oh, healthy and died of this. You have to ask critical questions. You have to take care of yourself so that we can reopen in a safe way. Help, help flatten the curve by taking care of your health. All right, guys, so this is Wellness Radio. We'll be right back after the break. You can find us on Facebook at Drs. Warren. Um, or on our website at doctorswarren.com. We'll see you right after the break. All right, guys. Hey, guys. So, Thanks yeah. for tuning in. We got a lot of comments yeah. here. My business has been shut down. For a month, for a month. man. It's I'm crazy. sorry, Lisa. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. No vaccines. God designed our bodies. God did design our bodies to heal. I so, love it, man. That's so true. So one really big thing. Ooh, you made a starker there. Sorry. Here you go. Okay, so one really big thing we want you guys to understand is what are we dealing with? Like... I read this quote by a doctor, and this is what it said. When the body is not well, any infection will do. Anything. Anything will do, okay? And so, you know, any infection. We have a, a epidemic of a bacteria, antibacteria, antibiotic-resistant bacteria. We have people that are dying from infections like they never have before. I think this is the biggest thing. The biggest thing I hope and I don't, no one's really talking about this in the news except like maybe on something like this. But the biggest thing I hope is like, how did we end up here? Like how did we end up so sick that so many people can't respond appropriately to infections? You know, how did we end up in a place? And so, you know. Wait, you think that, so that would require people to think about root cause, right? That would require people to, to go back and say, fundamentally, where have we had a breakdown in our society, in our healthcare system, and in our bodies. Yeah. So that's, that requires critical thinking. Yeah. Okay, and so, I was just making sure you do that. Yeah. <laughs> so one thing I want to share with you guys, and I say this every show, is that what is health? Okay. This healthy person, um, to it, this healthy person went to, you know, the hospital and they died of coronavirus. They were healthy. They were healthy. Let me go ahead and tell you guys. I coach women, and I coach some men too, but I coach women with some really serious 
thyroid and hormone issues. We're talking about PCOS, endometriosis, thyroid that their doctor tells them nothing's wrong or get someone thyroid medication and they're still bad. PCOS that they still feel horrible but they're on birth control so their doctor tells them that everything's fine. I sit across from women on a weekly basis that start crying when I look because I can notice it in their eyes. I know something's, I know they don't feel good in their own body. And when I acknowledge there's no way that you feel well, they start crying because they're pretty, they have their hair made up, they have a great smile, they dress fine, and they're dying on the inside and no one knows it. No one knows how they feel. I know how they feel because I experienced that after I got diagnosed with thyroid cancer when I was 19. I felt like it was going through menopause when I was 21. So I sit across from these women that in any other sphere, like at their medical doctor's office, they're considered healthy because all of their issues are managed with medication. And so if one of these women were to go to the hospital, they're considered having no health issues. They're considered uh, being, being, being fine. And then what happens if they pass away? Well, now this healthy woman, like, no. What you think, what, what we're sold on as this idea of what health is, is so screwed up. Yeah. Health isn't just getting rid of your symptoms. Health is always working towards optimal health. Function. It's function. It's optimal function. So just because you know you're taking a blood pressure medication or you're able to push through your pain does not mean you're well. And so I want you to think about that because you know there's that Facebook post of the sister's brother's cousin that worked at the hospital and this healthy woman came in and died or something like that. I want you to remember that. And I didn't show you this, mm -hmm. but a colleague of mine sent me a, a picture of someone who had posted, let's talk about COVID deaths or, you know, diagnoses. She posted a picture of someone that was having like kind of like an infection, mm -hmm. went to the doctor, tested for coronavirus, and it was negative. But they did find that she had pneumonia. So her coronavirus test was negative. I have, I have the picture of this. They were like, guys, pray for my wife. She went in with symptoms. Her corona test was negative, but she does have pneumonia. And the doctor says, this looks like it was caused by coronavirus. So even though the test was negative, this was coronavirus-induced pneumonia. We so got to understand these numbers are used to instill fear, these numbers are not accurate. We need unbiased reporting to know what's really going on worldwide. Is that even possible at this point? No. I don't so even know if that's Don't get possible. overwhelmed by the numbers. Yeah, guys. don't get overwhelmed. And we're going to answer these questions too, by the way. you got some really good questions here, so uh, we're going to get to those. All right, guys, welcome back to Wellness Radio. I am your health expert, Dr. Nathan Warren. I'm here with my beautiful wife, Dr. Rebecca Warren. We are also live on Facebook. Uh, again, getting lots of questions that we're going to get to. So if you're not on Facebook Live, man, you're missing out. You got to get on there, which would be really, really good. Uh, again, it's Drs. Warren, D-R-S-W-A-R-R-E-N. Uh, on Facebook. You can also check out our website, drswarren.com, uh, where we've got different videos. We've got a shop there with all kinds of different supplements that we recommend our patients, clients, and that we take ourselves. Um, and again, just uh, you know, just leave us a comment, say hi, whatever you want to do. Um, I, I'll tell you this, you know, you guys keep leaving your questions here because we're going to make sure that we get to all of these on Facebook, I promise you. Um, we'll make sure that we get to these maybe even at the end so we can do a, a, a rapid round. So guys, Go yeah, absolutely. So guys, we are, our health center is located in Hamilton Place, right across from the YMCA and next to the Home Depot. Um, and so we do in-office appointments. We have changed it all up. We do one-on-ones. No one's really exposed to each other. We do them off shift. We're working a lot of hours to be seeing you guys. And we do virtual health coaching. We do virtual one-on-one -on -one consults on Zoom. We did it before it was cool, before you started using like two it to- years ago. Yeah, before you started doing it to talk to your you know, auntie <laughs> in Michigan. I don't know. Um, but guys, uh, we just got a really awesome, can you speak about um, high blood pressure. For so sure. we got this question right now, and this is really great for us to talk about here on the radio because a lot of you guys are struggling with high blood pressure. And I want you to understand something. High blood pressure is really, really common. Um, because it's common, it's been given this feeling of just being normal. And a lot of people I will like I will not forget going out into the community and talking with people. And I'll be like, oh, do you have any health issues? No, I'm fine. And then I'll be like, okay, well, are you on any medication? 
oh, I'm on a little bit of blood pressure medication or I'm only on blood pressure medication. Guys, high blood pressure means your heart is pumping and working hard. Yeah. Well, it means there's, there's a breakdown, right? I mean, and, and, and your body is responding appropriately to the breakdown. Do you guys get that? that? I think that's the difference between the way that we look at health and the way that our medical system looks is, you know, the medical system fundamentally says, well, your body's a broken down machine, right? It's going to continuously make random mistakes. Uh, but what we recognize is that, uh, again, that's not true at all. Your body just responds to its environment, right? That's what it does. And so when you look at high blood pressure, we're talking about a, a person who is stuck in a stress response mm-hmm. because high blood pressure, having your blood pressure go high is an appropriate response in the right situation. I'm running away from a tiger. I want my blood pressure to go up. If I have somebody that's trying to rob me and I'm running away or I'm fighting, I want my blood pressure to go up. That is an appropriate stress response. When is it not an appropriate stress response? When you're sitting at a desk working and trying to meet a deadline for work, you know, at home while your kids are screaming in the background <laughs> and you can't get them to stop, you know, stop yelling and, and painting the wall during this house arrest, right? <laughs> that is when you are not, uh, uh, you know, again, that's when we don't want chronic high blood pressure. But again, high blood pressure is a stress response. Now, how does it deal with COVID-19? Because I think that's a primary thing that people want to know. And really the primary reason is because you have these receptors in your lungs called ACE2, okay? And so if you have a decrease in ACE2, you actually don't have that ACE2 is going to leave uh, basically room on those receptors for COVID-19 to be able to bind to those receptors and create infected cells in the lung. So guess what that means? Those of you who are taking something like and those of you who take something like an ACE2 inhibitor, right, for high blood pressure, I mean, literally, you're putting yourself at risk. I mean, that's just mm-hmm. the bottom line. Now, I'm not telling you to jump off of that medication because that's dangerous too. Um, but what I am saying is that you have to realize that you're, you have to get to the root cause of why you have high blood pressure in the first place. Um, uh, you know, and, and, and again, actually not just relying on a pill the rest of your life to take care of a stress response. The other thing is too, if you are forcefully bringing down your blood pressure, do you think that is a good situation or a bad situation for something like your brain and your hypothalamus that controls your stress response? right? It has to be, it cannot be a good situation if your body is trying to respond appropriately and yet you are constantly bringing it back. You know, that that negative feedback loop that keeps happening is a very, very dangerous cycle to go down. And so what are some of the primary causes of high blood pressure that we see? Number one, obesity, right? So obesity, we have, before we had a pandemic, COVID-19, what did we have? We had an absolute pandemic of obesity and a pa- and I'm talking about again worldwide not just in the United States mm-hmm. in the United States we are almost 50% of our population would be considered obese. And yes, this includes our children. How insane is that, right? And it's not saying that, I'm not saying that, you know, some of you that may be obese, I'm not saying that, again, that that, that means that you're not beautiful or that, you, listen, you're beautiful. God made you, okay? But bottom line is we have to have a real discussion and recognize that obesity is a dangerous, dangerous pandemic that is worldwide and it's something that we have to absolutely be aware of and make the steps towards taking care of that. Um, Another and, thing too, ahead. I was going to say, what we're finding as well is skinny obese. Like this, <laughs> this okay, this is, a, this is a real thing. It's really crazy. It's how a lot of Americans are actually malnourished. Yeah. Even though you might be normal weight, even if you might be overweight, what's happening is that we're looking fine on the outside, but internally our bodies are functioning as if we were obese. We're saying blood sugar imbalances. Guys, type three, type three diabetes is now, it's called Alzheimer's and dementia. So now, okay, so we have this overweight issue, but now we're seeing that even when we're thin, we're not well internally. So that's something to really look at. You know, another thing I think that'll be really important to talk about in regards to blood pressure is balancing out the HPA axis. Oh, for sure. I mean, again, you're stuck in a stress response, right? And and the body's so used to that, that that again, it creates, you know, massive amounts of damage. So So hypothalamus Mm -hmm. is in the brain, pituitary is in the brainstem and the adrenals. And so the hypothalamus is kind of our 
response system to our environment. So stress is stress is stress. If you're coming, if you're being chased by a tiger, the hypothalamus senses the stress and it changes everything within your body. But let's say it's not stress from that. Let's say it's stress from, uh, you know, you have the news on in the background all the time and being bombarded by negativity and death numbers and mortality counts. And Just watching this the count. and this, watching check, it, watching check, check. it. Yeah. Stress is stress, whether you're being chased by a tiger or whether you're watching the news. Also, what's another stress? What affects the HPA axis? Your spine. Oh my gosh, your spine. Like people are shocked when they look at their x-rays, when they see where their spinal cord lands within their spine, where their discs are, where their nerves are. If you are under stress from your spine and your nervous system, and I always give this example, you know, you look at Christopher Reeves, Superman, you know, fell off a horse, fractured the top bone in his spine, bruised his spinal cord at the top, and what happened? He got a lot of pain? No, no everything shut down. So if your body is under physical stress, emotional stress, chemical stress, you will see your blood pressure respond and an added bonus will be you'll have loss of sleep. Yeah, no doubt. How many of you guys are not sleeping? And so we're going to have to go on a break here. And when we come back, we're going to talk about solutions to help balance out that blood pressure response if you're having a high blood pressure. And this goes to for dysregulation with low blood pressure. Mm -hmm. You have to balance that out. And so we are the Wellness Radio with Doctors Warren. If you like our help, we have a clinic here locally in Hamilton Place or virtually. Our appointments are just 45 for the month of April. You can give us a call, 423-362-5360. Again, that's 423-362-5360. Or go to our website, doctorswarren.com. We'll see you right after the break. All right. I, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I didn't even realize that we were live on the radio I know, <laughs> during you that did time. It. I, I just, know you did it. I look down, I look down and I see our engineers like looking at us like we're on the radio and I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize that Even we when we that. came back, you started talking to Facebook live as you're uh, Guys, we have like a couple thousand listeners on the radio yeah. and he's talking to you guys. But <laughs> Oh man. Uh, well, I, I will say this. So HPA axis dysfunction. Brandy's good. I can't wait to get in and see you guys. Oh, yeah. Yes, come I can't in, wait for Brandy. you to come on in, Brandy. That's oh, awesome. So much fun. So you know, HPA axis dysfunction. I think that's that's huge because when you look at really the top fifty <laughs> chronic disease. Yeah, I can't. Uh, she's laughing. Guys, I really didn't know this we were is live. Really no hard idea. for us to do radio and like just like going back and forth. I'm not forth, coordinated but... <laughs> enough, I guess. Um, but HPA axis dysfunction. If you look at the top fifty chronic diseases. Actually, and you dive into the literature, you're going to find HPA axis dysfunction at the root of it, which means what? Your body is not able to respond to stress appropriately. Why? Because it's constantly in a stressed state. And so again, why do we have high blood pressure? Well, it is a stressed state. Why do we have something like, uh, again, things like, uh, you know, uh, high cholesterol? It is a stress response. Why do we have something like, uh, you know, a, again, high blood sugar? It is a stress response. I tell some of my patients that we're trying to get metabolically healthy and they ask, why is my blood sugar not going down even though I'm eating like kind of a keto genetic diet and pr the primary reason yes. behind that is because your cortisol is surging throughout the day and your cortisol will raise your blood sugar higher than if you eat 10 candy bars so yeah. again oh, yeah. you're stuck in a stress response being proactive versus reactive about your health yes man you are someone, so right about that Completely someone posted agree. a link for medical medium y'all you know you guys right. there's a lot of great health information i'm not gonna get oh, my right. health information yeah. from someone who talks to spirits I know a lot of people really like the guy. He doesn't guy. even say what spirit he talks to. I don't know. Simple. Yeah, I actually got one of the books from Medical Medium because I was like, oh, he's like a medical middleman. Like he's going to be yeah. the middle person between the patient and the doctor. And then I read more about him and I was like, oh, okay. Well, I mean, it, <laughs> and again, it doesn't mean it doesn't. He puts out some good information, but it's kind of surface information. Yeah. I mean, it's stuff so. that my, my mom's naturopath was telling her 25 years yeah. ago, you know? <laughs> Like celery juice. Well, dude, we've known yeah. that for the last like 30 years. It's not new. So, you know? But anyway, that's a whole So yeah, thing. being proactive versus being reactive is yeah. exactly it. So the blood pressure thing. So this is how I paint the picture because a lot of people don't get it, especially with lack of sleep. Yeah. Oh my gosh, guys. If you're being chased by a tiger, 
everything in your body changes for survival and no doctor would look at you in that state and say something is yeah. wrong your blood pressure will go up your vision will change you have high blood sugar because you can burn it up for energy your thyroid will shut down because you have a reserve of uh, thyroid hormones you know uh and so you know your digestive system shuts down because does it really matter if um you are digesting food or if you're surviving and so all of these things that you do to either fight for your life or to run away is perfect short term but then it becomes chronic if you're being hunted down um in in nature and nighttime hit and you went to go lay down how well do you think you're going to rest you're going to be up at night your mind's going to be racing and if you do fall asleep any little thing will wake you up what does it sound like it sounds like yeah. a majority of the sleep issues we have going on so sleep and blood pressure are two of the biggest things we see of an HPA axis that's in balance, of a body that's chronically stressed. Yes, that's right. And there are two things that doctors are so flippant about. They're just like, take a sleep medication, which just so you guys know, if you're on a sleep medication or anyone that you love or yes. know, sleep medications have only been studied to be used for under two weeks. That's it. How many people do you know that actually use it under two weeks? No, just like, just like even even you know medications like antidepressants, anti anxieties, they were they're literally created for short term use. And so you know when you start looking in the long term, you know long term side effects of these, again, you know you're basically an experiment because those were not studied in long term use, which is which is absolutely wild. Kathy, you're a big fan of medical medium, I see. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, do you, do you? <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to Wellness Radio. I am your health expert, Dr. Nathan Warren, and I'm here with my beautiful wife, Dr. Rebecca Warren. And we're talking about all things health and immune system today uh, and really getting down to root cause. You know, uh, again, as we talked about at the beginning of the show, people are dealing with, you know, basically a fear based mindset during this time of, of basically house arrest. Uh, you know, in this in this COVID nineteen you know pandemic, and so we really want to talk about uh, you know just really want to talk about what are the root causes of the problems that we're having, uh, and we've really taken a deep dive into things like high blood pressure. Uh, we've talked a little bit about metabolic disease, and maybe not quite as much as I wanted to talk about that. Uh, you know, obesity being a major problem and everything as well. Absolutely. And so let's talk about, as we're wrapping up this show, we talked about blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your solutions for some blood, blood pressure issues. Yeah, so uh, blood pressure, some of the best things that i found for it is number one, right? Start working on, again, getting your body to be an efficient fat burner and not an efficient sugar burner, right? You have to change the fuels that you're using. Why? Because that's gonna be one of the best ways that you actually get your body into a state of not only healing, but getting that stress response down. Because actually there's studies that link things like insulin resistance to an increase in hypertension as well. So they're directly connected. Um, so that's the first thing that I would say, you know, are you doing something like a, a an actual healthy form of a ketogenic diet could be a really helpful tool. And that doesn't mean it's for every single person, but it's one of the best things that's out there um, from the, from the, from the, uh, you know, the standpoint of uh, really making sure that you're taking care of, you know, your health. So I will say this, make sure that you're doing, when you're doing a ketogenic diet, that you're decreasing the amount of, of carbohydrates that are coming in, but that doesn't mean that you're doing no carbohydrates. It really should be a, a big, uh, you know, red flag if you were consuming, you know, basically, you know, 10, 10 grams of carbohydrates or less. Um, I really think, you know, sticking around like the 50 grams or less is going to be a, a much better approach. Uh, and again, being willing to cycle on and off uh, of a ketogenic diet is going to be really, really powerful as well. Well, um, the other thing that I recommend as far as blood pressure goes is support the hypothalamus. So I like adaptogens. Adaptogens work really, really well. So things like ashwagandha, rhodiola, cordyceps, lemon balm. These are all fantastic, you know, forms of adaptogens. What does that mean? So whether, you know, and I saw, I saw somebody just asked about, you know, high and low blood pressure. Well, guess what? You can do the same thing with adaptogens, right? So adaptogens don't push your body one way or another. They help support your hypothalamus, which means what? That means it's going to help you if you have uh, low blood pressure, guess what? It's going to support the hypothalamus through that. If you have high blood pressure, it's going to do the same thing. So that's why I like using adaptogens. Adaptogens. Absolutely. And guys, <laughs> I have to talk about this. One of the number one things we see 
on the chiropractic side of our clinic is blood pressure regulation. We're not telling you that an adjustment is going to cure your blood pressure. I'm not telling you to come in for this one thing. What I'm telling you is that when we help the brain communicate with the rest of the body, what we see in our office is extraordinary. I've learned through all of your, our years of practice is that I am in all of the human body and that when you remove the interference, when you remove the body's stressors, your body heals. When people come in, they're like, oh, I have back pain. And then a month later, they're like, my blood pressure is uh, balanced. It's because your body heals itself. So if you guys want our help, look for us at drswarren.com. If you'd like an appointment, it's just 45 for the month of April instead of 100 up to 150, just 45. Our phone number is 423-362-5360. Again, that's 423-362-5360 or find us on our website, drswarren.com or on Facebook at Drs. Warren. You guys have a wonderful Saturday and we'll see you soon. All right, guys. So we're going to go through some of these questions. I want to make sure we answer them. We're just going to stay live for a little bit, you know, because I want to talk about some more dealing with, uh, you know, this wonderful, amazing just time that we're in overall, right? Um, you know, and so let's kind of dive back into some of these questions that we have up here. Uh, let's see. I know we had a couple questions about... There we go. Can you see me? Oh. oh, yeah. I was talking to our engineer. Oh, okay. Do you think, <laughs> let's see, uh, let's see, do you think people who routinely get the flu shot are at higher risk of death if they get COVID-19? Uh, let's see, I Lisa asked that. that. Well, I I've actually, so I did see some literature on that that said that um, actually one of the studies that I saw was, was put out by the Department of Defense, right? So the Department of Defense actually put out a study where they they showed i think it was a i think it was about um a 2000 or 3000 kind of test group and what they showed is that yeah they i mean their recommendation was that uh you know basically a flu shot could possibly uh increase some of the the risk of uh having serious complications with uh with covid-19 again that's by the department of defense see if I can find that that link again and post that so you know it, for me regardless of what what you guys decide to do you know it's it's always to me it's your choice um, but you know when I look at the flu flu back you know the flu shot itself you know even at its highest I think it's what anywhere 19. from 30 to 45 percent you know in, in the history of the flu vaccine I think I there's mean, the been a couple, couple that were years, that were that high well the um, last couple of years they've been under 20 percent yeah under 20 percent I mean again to me I, I would rather do things like keep my vitamin D3 levels, serum levels up um, because we know how well that that actually helps with the immune system. Also too guys, I don't know if you know this, but I've talked about it in a couple of our lives before that vitamin D, making sure that it's up is actually a major contributor to increasing your ACE2, which again is very protective for the lungs. Um, so you want to make sure that that's uh, that that le those levels are up as well. Um, and again, you know, get out in the sunshine. But most of you guys are probably going to want to supplement with vitamin D as well. Um, you know, support the liver and the gut because that helps with the conversion of vitamin D in the body as well. But yeah, Department of Defense. That's where I got that information as far as the flu shot and everything goes. Um, Eric asks, is our our question is is our death rate in the U.S. lower than expected because of the quarantine? Well, I think that's a really hard question Oof, to answer. That would have been a good one. I think um, it's still on, yeah. But the but the reason that I would, you know, and again, it's probably not going to be a popular answer, but well, whatever. Um, the reason I would actually say no is because the data that I've seen when I'm looking at again the bell curve, right? That was that was established looking at looking at when there's a peak of each nation, you know, how many deaths per, you know, basically the percentage. Guys, it's it's all basically ending up just about the same, right? It's ending up just about the same. So that means even though Sweden took a completely different approach than we do, when it's all said and done, you're going to see just about the same percentage of death. And you're going to see that, you know, even though they hit their peak before we did, right, they hit their peak a little bit sooner, you're still going to see just about the exact same result from it. So the way I see it, the difference is they're not going to have, you know, the, the loss of life from shutting down their economy, uh, which again, I talked about Bloomberg, you know, the Bloomberg research looking at for every 1% rise in unemployment, we're talking about literally thousands of deaths uh, over the next, you know, three to six years, which is a serious issue, but yeah. Sweden's not going to see that. I so. think, I think the problem here is that if we don't have adequate, accurate numbers, then we're not going to have an accurate death rate, which is 
things to say. So, you know, one thing that's really frustrating is that we just started testing in March, but we were only testing severe cases. And so if the population we're comparing to is this really like severe case, then the death rate was two to 3% here in the States. But then, you know, just recently, about two or three weeks ago, they came out and said, oh, I mean, if we take into consideration some of these people that had milder symptoms, then the death rate would be 0.6%. So this is a play with numbers, and it, mm -hmm. and it sucks to think about that. But if we are not taking into consideration how many people do you know or yourself that says, man, I got tested for the flu in January or I got sick with something and I didn't know what it was or in March or, in, you know, February, there's all these people, maybe hundreds of millions of people worldwide that had something but didn't get themselves tested that they're not being added to the pool within the study to figure out the death rate. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if we looked at a million people that had mild symptoms and then this many people died, then the death rate would be significantly lower, but we're not doing that. We're only comparing it to the people that went and got tested. I mean, even my mom, we thought she may have had it, uh, you know, two months ago or a month ago, and we suggested her, she talked to her doctor and get herself checked, and her doctor was like, you know, right now the only place you can go get it is in the city, and I don't recommend you go. I don't want you to be around all those people. So she's sitting at home with the possibility that she has it, but she's not going to be part of that statistical pool. Another thing that's going to skew the death rate is that we just saw about two or three days ago that New York added an additional 3,700 deaths that were presumed to be from the coronavirus, that they were never tested. You know, there's the flu, there's the cold, there's all these things that are still going around. There could be someone that had a heart attack that, you know, may have had the virus and, and okay, well maybe they had a low grade fever for all you know, they may have been fighting a very simple infection, but they put it on the stats. So what do you think that's gonna do to the death rate? 3,700 presumed. If that doesn't bother you, like if that does not bother you, because this is what bothers me is, we're going to put 3,700 presumed deaths. So if we're going to presume things, how about we also add some presumed cases that never got tested, but they swear they, swear they had the coronavirus. <laughs> Let's add all those thousands of people that think they had it, but never got tested. No, we're not adding those people to the statistical pool. We're only adding the presumed deaths, but we're not adding all these other people that say, I got tested for the flu and it was negative or I had this and we're not adding them to help with the stats. We're only presuming the death. So the death rate, that percentage is just really wonky and it's very disappointing because we really don't have accurate information because we didn't handle it appropriately at the beginning. So now we're just like, you know, let's throw 3,700 people into the mix and increase yeah. the death rate. And, and I think that's going to be, that's part of the critical thinking that we were talking about. That's going to be a little hard to swallow, right? That, that when this is all kind of, you know, when this is all kind of said and done, are we going to be a group of people that actually does, you know, strategically look at the data and say, uh, you know what? We self quarantine. We basically, you know, shut down our entire economy. We sacrifice a lot of our civil liberties. Um, and was it worth it? Actually, the data says no, it wasn't. Are we going to be able to say that? Because I would actually say that we're a society that won't say that, right? That we're going to, regardless of what the data says, we're going to be like, no, no, no. I, I want to make sure that we're, um, no, no, no. I want to make sure that we're doing, uh, you know, that 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 because we stayed under, you know, followed the guidelines, that was sacrifice. You know, I I don't want to think that that possibly didn't work. But, you know, again, I think when we look at the data, when it's all said and done, I think you're going to see that, that again, it's, it's about the same, whether you're in Sweden or whether it's here, um, which means that we shouldn't, I, at least in my opinion, I, that's why, you know, when we're talking about herd immunity, it's a real thing, right? Herd immunity is a, is an absolute real thing. And it only exists in nature, in the natural realm. Uh, it does not, it, herd immunity does not, you know, exist artificially, regardless of what your quote unquote experts tell you. Um, but again, it's, it's, a significant thing and you know you look at places like Sweden guys they're not dumb people like they, they didn't just make this up they have epidemiologists there that are some of the most brilliant on the planet that said hey you know what this is a legit this is an actual legit plan 
let's do it. Like this is a legit plan. Let's do it. And we're not shutting down our economy. So we're not going to see the backlash of all the money that's being lost, all the jobs that are being lost, all the people that are going to be homeless. Like I, I'll tell you right now, it, it absolutely crushes me to think about in my own city, all the businesses that were already shut down and yeah. now a tornado just went through oh, and now yeah. people have lost their house. They've lost their businesses. Like guys, what about that? What about when natural disasters happen and people are already on the brink of suffering just because again, they've lost their job and they've closed down their business. Um, so to me, you know, the lives versus lives, I mean, this whole this shutdown is, hard, is, yeah. is, is, is much worse. Go ahead. I wanted to share this because we were talking about blood pressure and I really like this comment from Sierra. Um, we're talking about how controlling your blood pressure comes from your nervous system, from the autumn, like that kind of rest, digest, parasympathetic nervous system. Mm -hmm. And she said something about how I've struggled, struggled with an autonomic nervous system disorder since a teen. Oh, wow. So it has a uh, low blood pressure um, and causes dizziness, but she's controlled it with eating healthy keto, wow. tons of water, and seeing her chiropractor regularly. Um, and that's amazing. Wow, that's awesome. Who knows Sierra, what that's they so would have like yeah. thrown your way. But that's wow. really cool to see how that, how you can control your response. So what's happening internally is response to what's happening externally. Oh, I love it, man. And, and look at, look at what a strong response, right? Like that's like, uh, instead of somebody, you know, saying, you know what, I'm, a, I'm just a victim of, you know, maybe it's my genes or a victim of what's going on. You, you literally said, no, you know what? I am. And I'm going to figure out a solution to help my body the best that I possibly can. And I just want to salute. I mean, that's fantastic. I, I absolutely love that. Um, I think that's great. So, you know, I, I wanted to kind of give, you know, one of one of the things that um, just really quick with with one of the things that I think is driving a lot of this epidemic, and that's that's metabolic issues. So being metabolically unhealthy, I think that, you know, especially when we're looking at in the realm of pre-diabetes, right? All the people that, again, can be considered, you know, if they died from COVID-19 or if they haven't, they would be considered healthy individuals, even though they may have been pre-diabetic for years. And we know that prediabetes is a major, major issue. We actually, some studies show upwards to 80 million people in the United States would be considered to be prediabetic if actually tested appropriately. And so, you know, I really think that's a major one that we have to, you know, have a conversation about is, you know, are people metabolically healthy? And some of the biggest things that end up damaging your metabolic health and how well, again, you are able to, you know, literally burn fuel and be able to, you know, protect your mitochondria in your cell and have proper cell function, the two biggest things that I see is number one, right? Even before sugar, even before sugar is rancid trans fat. We still live in a place and a society where people are consuming high amounts of rancid damaged seed oils. And this is not okay. So we have to make sure that we are getting rid of these trans fat because as we consume these, these damaged fats, they make up your cell membrane, they disrupt your receptors that bind to things like insulin, that bind to things like thyroid hormone, that bind to, you know, again, your hormones, they disrupt that entire process and they create damaged cell function. You actually lose, you know, that cell membrane potential, which is basically life to your cells. And so we have to get rid of these bad fats. So while you're in your house and while you, you know, maybe you don't have time for anything else but to focus on your health, make sure that you are not consuming rancid vegetable oils, right? Change that thing out. I used to tell my patients and my clients when I'm working on their, their health from a dietary standpoint, we used to talk about sugar first, but I don't do that anymore. I talk about fat first. I talk about, you know, you've got to change out the healthy fats that you're, you know, you got to consume healthy fats get rid of the damaged bad fats because that's the number one way that you are going to move your metabolic health in the right direction. And so we talk about things like, you know, cook with avocado oil or use something like, you know, grass fed butter or grass fed ghee, you know, even so using something like pastured, uh, you know, pasture raised like, um, 
uh, you know, uh, like beef fat or, or bison tallow, those type of things. Use really good fat when you're cooking your meals and add things like raw organic olive oil onto your, onto your food. You know, consume things like raw sprouted nuts and seeds and avocados and pastured eggs and pastured meat. Get all of these good healthy fat, right? If fat is your friend and it metabolically gets you well and get rid of the trans fat and watch what your health does. You all of a sudden you start to see things like your insulin resistance change over towards insulin sensitivity. You start to see your body, you know, again, operating on a whole nother level just by changing that up. And I really believe that the majority of people that are suffering, you know, from COVID-19 and then are either succumbing to COVID-19 or having serious complication, I think at a metabolic level, there's dysfunction there. All right. I think there's dysfunction there. And we already went over high blood pressure and what I, what I believe about that based on ACE2 receptors. And so again, we have to address these thing. And the good news is this is all stuff that you guys can address from home, right? Starting today, or maybe you already started, you know, and start leaning towards, you know, consuming a healthy diet, making sure that you guys are continuing to move. Remember one of the best ways to increase your insulin sensitivity is to exercise. I love high intensity interval training to really increase your insulin sensitivity. And so you can do these from home, you know, on a regular basis. All right. So make sure that if you guys have any follow-up questions, be sure to ask them here. We love to, you know, kind of go back and answer these. For those of you that this is your first time watching us, we're super excited that you joined us. Uh, man, we love interaction like this. Uh, for those of you that are on the front lines fighting for your health, I just want to salute you and I want to say, man, we're so thankful to be on this journey with you guys. Uh, and again, if you like what we talk about, I, I always ask that you guys please share this information. Um, you know, my goal, I'll be completely honest with you, is I want to be able to get uh, you know, this information out to as many people as I can. Why? Because I know that that's lives change uh, on the back end there. And those of you that say, well, how can I connect with you guys further? Hey, well, go check out our website, doctorswarren.com. Check out our academy that we have there. It's a lot of fun. Uh, again, it's a it's an academy that we have. It's a private group uh, that we're doing new topics every single month. Now, I will say right now, our academy is built for moms and it's built for kids. Uh, so, you know, and it's built for women. That's who it's built for. So that Academy, if you want to go check it out, uh, look into it, you know, we, we go over all kinds of cool topics and everything, but that's at doctorswarren.com. Uh, and as always, I hope you guys have a great weekend and regardless of what's going on, at least get outside, enjoy some sunshine. If you got some sunshine in your area, love on your family, work on your mindset, uh, and we will see you guys soon. Have a good rest of the day. Music